Hello, hello. This is Kim Addis, and I am the president and founder of Frame of Mind Coaching. And you have just joined us at the Frame of Mind Coaching Podcast, where we take some willing volunteer who has a challenge and is willing to be coached live and in person on the podcast. So I want to introduce you to, let's call him an old friend. His name is Jeff Kahane. Jeff, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm thrilled to have you here. It's like I'm already having a good time and we've only been talking for a minute. Um, <laughs> and well, I'm, I'm just appreciative that you said a volunteer and not a victim. <laughs> oh, well, definitely a volunteer. So, so you live in Calgary and you're a lawyer? Yes. Okay, so tell us a little bit more. What kind of law do you do and what's going on out, out there in Calgary? Calgary, for those of you who don't know, is in Canada. So. Yeah, that we're a little bit west of Young Street. It's uh, like a nice place to come, and and yeah. we don't have horses on the street and stuff. But um, yeah, so I, I do real estate law, which I like to refer okay. to as happy law. It's you know people buying, selling houses, refinancing. Uh, there's no no magic in that area of law. In fact, it's it's boring paper. But I love the people, and so it makes it interesting. The challenges change all the time, uh, and um, on, on top of that, I I mean I own the firm, so we've got about 50 employees, uh, 26 50, lawyers, five five zero. Okay. Yeah. Um, 26 lawyers. We have two more starting on the first and another one starting on the 15th. And uh, it, it's busy. So, I mean, I think the economy out there, well, the economy is not great you know, these days, but real estate is crazy busy. Family law is crazy busy. Uh, immigration, or not immigration, um, litigation law is crazy busy. So, so all of that is under your umbrella? Yeah. I, I only do real estate. So you I, do but real we, estate, but all I do real estate. Lawyers? Yeah. We're, we're, Immigration, litigation, wills and estates, corporate commercial, real estate, family. Um, we're, we're, we don't do criminal, but we're basically full service. Okay. Okay. So, so your company has grown over the past 15 years. Yeah. You know, we've had recessions here over the last maybe four or five years, but we've doubled in size twice during that time. Okay. And what is your role in the company? You said, I own the firm. Do you have a partner or partners or is it just you? It's just me. Okay. And what do you like? What is your role at this point? Well, you know, I know everyone always tells me you're supposed to work uh, on the business, not in the business, like that little cliche thing. But 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 I love working in the business. Uh, I love meeting with clients and getting to know them and like chit chatting with them and the whole bit and and the challenges that you have on files. And I also love the business of law. So ultimately, I end up doing both. Um, um, you know, I don't like day-to-day -day, like like HR management stuff, but I have a good office manager who deals with that. Uh, I love learning SEO, search engine optimizing, and through that we end up with between twenty-five and thirty-five hundred referrals a month off our website. So wow. that's um, an all organic, like not paid. Um, so that's been really good, obviously, for the firm and our growth. Um, through through COVID, I got excited because I thought. How do I keep our staff busy in Calgary in case there's like a big crash in, in, in work? I said, let's open an office in Edmonton. So I got to redo all the stuff I did on, on uh, growing through um, online organic searches in a new city. So it's kind of, it's been, it's been a fun adventure to start again with that. So COVID hits and you decide to open up a new office. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> so that's a, that's a diametrically opposed action or reaction than most people have which is to hunker down scale back maybe let some people go even instead you're expanding we're one of the few firms a lot of firms either let go like, like well, my closest competitor uh let go uh 75 of his staff and we almost recruited a couple of them decided like mm, we're not going to recruit more people at this point but um uh, in other firms like the big downtown firms were like salary cuts letting go of people and the whole bit and my, my view has always been this. My daughter's played competitive volleyball for years with the Dinos uh, organization, like the universe, associate of the university here. And um, sometimes they'd have a bad ref, well, one in particular. And the girls would be like, oh, it's not fair. He always like calls us on penalties and not the other side. And it was very true. But, you know, my message to them was always, look, you have two choices. You can be like, oh, what was me? Like, you, you, he's mean to us. Or you can say, we're going to play harder, fight harder, score more points and win. And, and I mean, they did that. It's like, yeah, that makes sense. And that's what we did. Like, okay, we can complain about COVID. We can complain about the government. We can complain about the taxes that we're, we're sure going to seize sometime, but it doesn't do us any good to complain. So yeah, get aggressive, grab it by the horns and, and do what you need to, to make things work. 
So what is your challenge? It sounds like you're, you know, scoring on all fronts. Do you even have a challenge? Well, there's always challenges. The challenges is, is balancing all of that. Like growth is a hard thing to balance. Uh, when I first started uh, really expanding the business, uh, I, I brought in some management consultants and saying like, am I, should I be buying a building? Should I be doing this? Like, should I, like, I have no clue. I, I never ran a business before and law school, certainly they don't teach you about that. Right. And um, what, what they said to me uh, made a lot of sense because it's how I live my life and also made me like say, no, uh, they said 98% of the CEOs of fortune 500 companies also make decisions from your gut. Uh, and it's like, great. Well, my gut's been working and you guys don't have my butt gut, so that's not going to work. But, but it's still a challenge because, you know, in a, in a market that has potential uncertainty. So that's, we, we know now that things are crazy busy for us, uh, through the COVID, but there's going to be, you know, the mortgage deferrals are going to stop happening. The government eventually we will start ha stop handing out hundreds of billions of dollars to everyone for sitting around, and um, you know at that point, what is the, what do things look like? Um, and so you're, you know, it's that balancing of running everything, keeping everybody's heads, you know, not scared and just like working and everything's okay, and um, knowing like, do we expand but not too much? Do we, um, you know, you don't you don't want to. Uh, increase your overhead to the point where things slow down, you're screwed. We also don't want to not increase your overhead. Uh, family law, we're sending out 10, 12, 13 files a day uh, to other firms. Uh, we've hired two more, but how do you manage that? Because you don't know when the tap's going to turn off. So that, that's like a big challenge right now for us. I mean, it's a good challenge. Okay. And, and I don't mean to whine to people who don't have work, but it's like, you could you can lose everything okay. by increasing your overhead. Okay, so let me tell you something that I've learned over the years, and uh, as a result of working with people just like you, highly driven leaders and typically entrepreneurs who are growing very very successful businesses. I, I have to stop you. Yes, I, I don't. I don't. I, I don't consider myself highly highly driven. Like not even a little bit. Okay, so you're and, not and, highly driven. You're just and, this and, guy who lazes around and has barbecues in his backyard. Well, that, that part is true also, but I, I'm, I've never been, and this is how I differentiate in my head. I, I've never been externally motivated. I don't care about marks. I've never done anything for the dollars. When my office manager said like, why, how big do you want to be? But hold like, on, who says motivation needs to be for the marks or for the dollars? It, it shouldn't be. I guess, okay, I mean, I love- Okay, that doesn't mean you're not motivated and that doesn't mean you're not driven. If you're telling me the story of your daughter and the, and your answer to your daughter is play harder and then win, that is a driven mindset. Sorry, you're driven. I think that's a motivated mindset. It's still a driven Like I'm motivated mindset. by having fun every day and I love having fun every day and that's what motivates me, but I'm not driven. Like in, I, I just don't, like for me, that's, it doesn't resonate with so me. So let me, let me ask you a question and we don't have to get hung up on the word driven, but why did you decide to grow over all these years? Like, what was the purpose? Why didn't you just, if you like serving your clients, why didn't you just serve your clients and talk to all the clients that you could? Cause you enjoy that piece. Because I also enjoy the marketing piece. Like I love the creativity. I love the inventiveness. I love the socialization that goes with it. And if I don't have inventory to sell, then there's no point to marketing. Okay. But at the same time, and again, I might be wrong, but what I'm also hearing is when I'm working on SEO and I'm getting 3,500 leads a month, that's kind of cool. Yeah. But it's, it's driven versus motivating. I do it because to me, it's like Sudoku. So like I wake up in the morning on the weekends and you know, the kids are sleeping, whatever. And I love jumping on the computer and it's like the strategy is you've, you've got so many things that have to line up and also compete with each other that it's really engaging in your brain. And so it's, so it's, it's motivating. I'm motivated to do it, but I'm not driven to do it. And well, I know it's a, a distinction, but yeah. I think it's an important one. Okay. And it, it's not important for the purposes of this conversation, but I would still say that you have a drive to figure things out. I'm motivated to have fun every day. Okay. Fine. Really we agree matter. to disagree. It All doesn't right. really matter. <laughs> but, but what I want to share with you is my experience with leaders and how they address the challenge you have, which is what's the right rate of growth? What's the right rate of risk? That's really your question, right? Like, how do I make the right decisions? Up until now, I've made gut-based decisions and they've worked out for you. 
no reason why that has to change. But let me give you a little bit more of a tactical approach to your question. So Thank here's you. what here's what uh, leaders, driven or not, doesn't matter. Uh, here's what leaders who are achievers do. What they do is they say, here's a decision in front of me. And let's say it's, you know, buy another building or let's say hire another 10 people. So they look at that, that, that decision and they look at the upside. You know, what's the upside of this, this decision? And then what they do is they look at the downside and they say, what would I do if this decision blew up on me? What, if, what would I do if this decision was an absolute royal failure? How would I react? How would I rebound? What would my strategy be? And so they play that out fully. So it's not that these leaders discount failure. It's not that these leaders are strictly optimists. That's not the case. What they do is they assess the risk by imagining failure and imagining a recovery to that failure. But does that work with your clients who are really ADD and have a hard time focusing on things like that? Yes, it works (laughs) because I help them do it in small chunks. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So. So you're the, the, no, no squirrel over here. It's like, okay, let's focus on this a little bit for a short time and then we can move forward. Well, and even if there's a squirrel, let's go chase the squirrel for a bit and then we'll come back. Love it. Love it. So. Squirrels are squirrels. They can be fun too, right? No problem. I, I agree, but it's like sometimes you just need that extra little guy. Yeah. 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 Are you are you an ADD person who chases? Oh, it's squirrels? awful. Yeah, all the time. In fact, I've got a stuffed squirrel in my drawer for when we have meetings in the office, so they can refocus me. <laughs> so the idea is to play it out, fail, and imagine recovery. If you can imagine recovery, and that feels okay, then you move forward with the risk. If you imagine recovery. I'm sorry, if you imagine the failure and you cannot imagine recovery, that's not a risk worth taking. Can you figure that stuff out? Of course. Oh, well, I, I've not had of that course. mind so, process before. I, right. So it's, it's a little bit backwards, right? Because usually we say, stop imagining failure, start imagining success. And yes, imagine success as long as you can live with the idea of rebounding back from a colossal failure. And if you can, if you, if in your mind, you're saying, okay, these are the things I would do. Now you can put that aside and focus on imagining, envisioning, completely enjoying the unfolding of the success. Okay. But here's another piece. Let me add one more thing. You said, you know, there's all this uncertainty. Yes, there's all this uncertainty. And we believe that the uncertainty is much more heightened now with COVID. And that's not really true. It's just that we have something to label as the cause for our uncertainty. But the uncertainty was really no different, like before COVID started. We and didn't I guess really true. know what was coming down the line. Like, like, and especially in Alberta, like we're, we've always had ups and downs because oil and gas is always ups and downs. And really, regardless of what COVID does on one side, all it takes is, you know, like China getting crazy, war in the Gulf, oil prices shoot up, and then suddenly... You know, in Alberta, they forget very quickly that the tap turns on and it turns off. And so it's like, yay, all this money. (laughs) It it changes fast. Exactly. So, you know, this is a good litmus test as you're making decisions moving forward. You know, can I handle things if they totally fail? And if yes, go forward and then use your gut instinct, right? And say, Yeah. yeah, this feels really good or no, this doesn't feel really good. Your gut has served you until now. No reason to discount it, but that other piece uh, is useful when you're making more risky decisions. Right. That's that's using your head as a tool versus making decisions with your head and using your gut as your decision making. I, I would say like your your gut is a good veto element, right? And your head right. is a good you know should I move forward element. Okay. Yeah. Like I if always, something I feels start- bad. If something feels yeah. bad in your gut, don't move forward. Don't push yeah. through anyway. Right. right, right. No, that makes a lot of sense. And, and consistent with how I usually think about things. Yeah. Amazing. Jeff, I yeah. want to say thank you for coming on this podcast. It was fun to see you again after all these years. It's so and, long. Yeah, so long. And we, we, 
we'll have to get you out for a backyard barbecue. Oh, I'm in for sure. You, you're not vegan. This is no, no oh, offense to I'm vegans, but it's just a, I'm a definitely <laughs> not vegan. Uh, please share with the audience your backyard barbecue story because I think it's worth hearing. So, so every year for like the last, and it started off small um, with four guys in a 30 pound prime rib. Uh, it's called the red meat party. No white meat allowed, just red meat, no garnishes. The vegetarian dish slash vegan dish is chili with meat, but there's some beans and stuff in it. And uh, every year is a different theme. So people get dressed up, costumes. We've had steampunk circus, favorite rock star, your favorite dead person, anything but clothes. And uh, every year it's just a new adventure and so much fun. So I'm excited for next year, uh, August, beginning of August. We already got it booked out and everything ready. And how many people show up to this big meat party? About 150. You should invite Lady Gaga. She would like. I did invite the Queen of England once. Right. And I, I got a, a written uh, respectful decline from her. Um, so, you know, it was nice that she thought about coming. <laughs> yes, but, yeah. I've, I've remembered that conversation with you and it stuck in my head as this very unique experience. And yes, definitely the next time that you have a meat party, put me on your invitation list. August, August, come down in August. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, thank, thank you for you sharing your, your challenge, but also thank you for sharing a very different approach to handling COVID, which is, hey, there's an opportunity for growth here. And I think that is very inspiring. And uh, I think that message was just as important as how do you make decisions that are potentially risky? So thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Oh, and thank you. I appreciate your insights. Fantastic.